it's early January and I'm sitting here waiting for the arrival of my new telescope. In the meantime, my ASI 6200 camera and an off-axis guider I purchased from ZWO have both arrived, and I thought I would take this time to couple them to my old electronic filter wheel in order to build the image train, so that when the telescope does arrive, I can just attach it. The big challenge here is trying to maintain a 55 millimeter back focus distance between the focal reducer of the telescope and the image sensor. For comparison, my old Celestron off-axis guider is 67 millimeters long by itself, so clearly cannot be used for this system. Luckily, ZWO provides a couple of different configurations to get you to this 55 millimeter back focus distance with all three components. So starting from the camera, in order to shorten the back focus distance, we can remove the front tilt plate. And this leaves us with a 12 and a half millimeter distance from the front face of the camera to the image sensor. The screw holes that are left behind by removing the plate can be used to hard attach this camera to the two inch electronic filter wheel, which adds another 20 millimeters of back focus. The M68 off-axis guider provided by ZWO is only 17 and a half millimeters thick, so very narrow and it is screwed through four different screws to the electronic filter wheel as well. At this stage, we can take the sensor tilt adapter that came off the camera and put it onto the face of the M68 off-axis guider in order to terminate this assembly with an M54 thread. If one wanted to tilt it to, uh, to terminate with an M68 thread, there is a sensor tilt adapter available from ZWO. In either case, it only adds a final five millimeters onto the back focus distance, adding up to 55. Now I know that the focal reducer coming from Stellar View is gonna actually terminate in an M48 male thread. But luckily, when my filter wheel was originally purchased, it came with both an M54 to 42 and an M54 to 48 adapter. So these can be threaded inside of the sensor tilt adapter uh, and they won't add any back focus assistance to the assembly. Once this image train is built, I can open up the filter wheel and add three new filters to my configuration, a three and a half nanometer hydrogen alpha, a four nanometer oxygen three, and a four nanometer sulfur two narrowband filter. At the same time, I will take the ASI 174mm mini guide camera off of my old assembly and place it on the M68 off-axis guider, completing the configuration. So let's actually go through the step-by-step -step assembly of this image train. So what we've assembled here are our parts and tools. We've got an M2.5 metric Allen wrench, a small Phillips head and a small straight blade screwdriver, our main imaging camera, the 6200, the ASI 174 guide camera, our electronic filter wheel, and our off-axis guider. So first thing we want to do is we want to remove the plate from the front of the camera. And to do this, we need to remove three of the larger M2.5 screws. So we just do that with R. And you can see I'm wearing gloves just so as not to get fingerprints on any of the optics as we open them up. And taking care not to lose our screws. These are M2.5 by 8 millimeter screws. And we'll use those later for remounting the tilt plate. So the tilt plate comes right off, exposing the sensor and the sensor cover. Underneath this black section here, we actually have a heater uh, that keeps the front window from frosting over on those cold nights. So the camera is ready. Now what we need to do is start the disassembly of our 
electronic filter wheel. So for this we need a Phillips head screwdriver and we will start removing the cover plates, the cover screws. Once again I've got a small container to catch these screws. So now we can remove the top plate of our filter wheel and we'll just put that aside. Now that we've removed our cover plate, we've exposed our filters and you can see we have our red, green and blue filters in here as long as along with a luminance filter and then I have a black, uh, just a blank filter which is used for generating dark frames. So what we want to do is remove these three screws uh, to release the actual filter wheel. So these, to do this, I actually have forceps so as to not drop this. So we'll loosen all three of these. With these screws loosened now, I can just remove them with the forceps and set them aside for reassembly later. Okay, once those are removed, we can carefully remove the actual wheel containing the filter elements and we'll set that aside. So now we take our camera and there are these holes on the red outer ring and these four are what we're going to use to attach to the filter wheel. So to do this we take our M2.5 by 6 millimeter screws and place them in the outer holes of the filter wheel. So we will line this up with our screw hole and here is number four. So once these four screws are in place, just give them a slight finger tightening. Since between heating and cooling, these may loosen up. We want them snug, but not so tight as to strip the threads. Okay. Now that the camera is in place, what we want to do is remove any dust which we put into the system. And I do this with this air air blower and now we can replace our filter wheel and to do this we actually have to lift up a small rubber catch which protects the wheel from falling off and then we just place it down and align the screw holes once again and replace the screws, screws with that we removed earlier so once again, I find this is best done with forceps. And it doesn't really matter what the orientation of the wheel is. There's a sensor. You can see each cell is numbered and there is a sensor which we will calibrate when we power up the unit and it'll reestablish the zero point of the filters. So there's no need to worry about lining them up right now, lining the wheel up right now. Once again, we tighten them down snugly, but don't over torque them. Okay. So now you can see we've got our camera mounted directly to the filter wheel and we're ready to start the assembly of the front face. So here's our front plate. And as you can see, there are four screw holes here on the front plate as well. 
And these are going to line up with the off-axis guider. So here's the off-axis guider. It comes with a number of M2.5 by 8 millimeter screws and has these four screws on the back which will line up perfectly with the plate. Okay. Uh, the screws that we're going to use for this are M2.5 by 8 millimeters so we can take them from this front face since that's going to have to come off anyway and it can join the screws we removed from the actual camera tilt plate. So, we can take our Allen wrench and remove these. So, once we have this removed, I find it helpful to place the off-axis scatter slightly off the table so that it can lie flat on the front plate. And now, making sure that this prism is pointed with the flat end up, we can screw the off-axis guider into the filter wheel plate. So now that all four screws are in, we use the Allen wrench once again to snug them up without over tightening them. That being done, we now have the off axis guider assembled to the front plate of the electronic filter wheel. So we're now ready to add that back to the filter wheel and camera assembly. So we place this on front top of the cover. And now we go back to the screws we removed earlier. And once again replace them. reattach the front plate. <clears throat> and so now what you can see is the completed assembly with the front electronic filter wheel plate in place with all of its screws. And we have our camera bolted directed to the wheel, directed bolted directly to the off-axis guider. So this is great. No adapters. Everything is rigidly attached with a very, very short back focus distance. So now we're going to complete the assembly by taking the tilt plate that we removed in the first step from the front of the camera and put it on the off-axis guider. This plate has a rubber ring to provide a nice light tight seal and that just goes right back on the off-axis guider and we're lining up the three holes with those of the plate. So we can go back to the bolts we removed earlier, which are these M2.5 by 8 millimeter screws, and place them in the tilt plate, line them up, and with an Allen wrench, screw them in to the off-axis guider plate. M2.5 by 8 millimeter screw. which is now attached so we can now tighten up all three once again snugly but not over tight and 
This is an M54 to adapt this to an M48 thread. We have this adapter ring, which came off of the electronic filter wheel and can be screwed into place in order to adapt this to the telescope. But for the moment, we have this dust cap, which fits directly on the tilt plate. And we can use that to protect dust from the camera. So now we have a fully sealed system assembled and ready to go. The only thing we still need to add is our guide camera. And this will all have to be adjusted later for focusing. But we can take our guide camera, insert it into the top of this assembly, and then using these two screws, tighten the camera down. Now what we'll do later on in a video on focusing, is I'll show you how you can actually focus this camera. This gold screw here is loosened in order to move this fine helical focuser. It has a scale from 0 to 6, so we'll just set it to 3 for now. Halfway in between. And here's our final assembled optical train. Camera, filter wheel, off-axis guider, all ready to be adapted to the telescope. And we are done. So I hope you found that informative. It's very, very easy with all these Z ZWO parts. They fit together really well. It's a very well thought out uh, piece of equipment. So thank you very much for watching. And next we're going to start doing some work on uh, measuring camera performance and focusing once the telescope is here.